recording so uh welcome everyone thank you for making it uh okay in case so if you've gone back and see the recording please try to be on time um So, what's wrong with this? Welcome. I'm confused. Is there any stuff in this line? No, oh, there you go. This just says, okay. Uh, so, can I write that? Let me. Is it just, is it? Okay, uh, let's start talking. So, um, last thing we did, we learned about the division algorithm, uh, which I, I wrote here. Well, not so much the algorithm, but the answer. Uh, you have two polynomials, and as long as you're not dividing by zero, you can always find a quotient and a remainder. So if you find a division, this means that you have uh, this equation, where the numerator is the denominator times the quotient plus a remainder, and the stuff left over is small, uh, in that its degree is smaller than the degree of the denominator. Now, why the hell? Is, uh, is this line not updating? I have no idea. So today, I'm going to talk about the, the greatest common divisor. Uh, so I should start by saying what is the greatest common divisor. <clears throat> um, so you know what it means for integers. Um, but uh, what should it mean? So this is just this just doesn't want to update today. Okay, um, I'm gonna share my tablet screen. So if you're um, Welcome. Who was that? That was me. <laughs> Silly. Okay, so <clears throat> let me just show you my screen here. Okay, so what is the greatest common divisor? Uh, so what I want to know is what the greatest common divisor is in a in the, in the ring that's not the integers. So say we have um, any ring. And say we have two elements. We say D is a greatest common divisor. of A and B if um, so what what should this mean in a in a ring? What should the greatest common divisor be? Is 
their co-primes. So if they're co-primes, that means that their greatest common divisor is one. Um, that's what we mean. So, so what would it mean to say that the greatest common divisor is one? I mean, so first of all, what what is what is, what do I mean by a divisor? What do I mean if I say that uh, D divides A and B in a ring? Oh, that you can factor uh, A and B. Right. Um, it means that I can write I can write uh, A as D times one of the things and B as a multiple of, of D. Um, for some R, S in the ring. And since we use this a lot, we write a bar. I know you've seen this notation before, but if you write a bar, that means D divides A. So this is, this makes it a common divisor. So for example, one is gonna be a common divisor of everything, but what makes it the greatest? Um, so the thing is in the integers, the integers have an ordering. Uh, so when we say greatest, you know, we can talk about the largest number, but rings do not come with orderings. Like the complex numbers have no reasonable way of ordering them. Uh, so just using addition and multiplication, we have to define greatest. Um, so it's the greatest in meaning. So what could it mean if we have D prime, if we have any other common divisor, then um, it should be in a sense smaller than the greatest one or smaller or equal. Uh, and a way to make sense of this um, is to say that D, D prime should divide the um, uh, divide D. So we don't have we don't have an, an ordering but uh, I mean, the relation divides, it's also, well, it is an ordering. Um, so we use we use the relation of division to, to replace the fact that we can't talk about uh, sites of elements of a ring in general. Okay, so that's the greatest common divisor. Um, and what I want to prove today is that the, there is, I said what it is, but that doesn't guarantee that it exists. A lot of rings have no greatest common divisor, as we'll see. Um, uh, so if K is a field and I take two polynomials, then um, first of all, the greatest common divisor exists so there is a, a polynomial with the property that it divides both and anything else any other common divisor divides in and second um, if if d is the greatest common divisor i can write it uh I can write it as a linear combination of P and Q. Um, so this 
should be familiar because it's true for the integers, right? Or maybe, maybe you haven't seen this before, but the exact same thing is true for the integers. Um, the, the, of course, the greatest common divisor exists, uh, and, but also you, you can write it, hello, you can write it uh, as a combination of the original integers. This is called the Zeus identity, if you ever see this uh, name. Oh, okay. So that's where we're headed. Where we're headed. Um, any questions? Well, Friday hitting us hard. Okay. Um, so um, I'm going to take a bit of a detour to proving this, the showing that the greatest common divisor exists because I mean, along the way, I'm going to prove some, uh, some useful stuff that we're going to need later. So if you look at the book, you can see a proof and I'm going to do essentially the same proof. Um, but I'm going to talk about ideals before that. So, well, ideals were in your homework and you, you handed in yesterday. So, um, well, you know what they are, but let me just, for a quick reminder, uh, let me tell you what they are, then write it down. So it's a, it's a subset. Um, with two properties. So the first is that it's a subgroup um, with addition. So this means that zero is in always in an ideal. And if you have two elements, um, the in the ideal the sum is in the ideal the opposite is in the ideal and uh the other one is that the other property is that it's closed under multiplication by elements of r so i can write it like this the multiplication of anything in r times anything in an ideal is again in the ideal um So, um, for example, an example of an ideal to keep in mind, um, the multiples of n. So you take two multiples of n, you add them, you get a multiple of n. Uh, zero is a multiple of n. And if you multiply a multiple of n by anything, it's still a multiple of n. Um, okay, you know what ideals are. Because if you forgot, I gave you homework, I'm forced you to remember. So, um, so how do you, so, um, I want to talk next about how to make ideals. So one way to make ideals um, is to is to look at principal ideals. So um, so take an element in a ring. Then the ideal generated by by A, we write it with 
angly brackets. Uh, or you might see it written as like even just like this. Um, so the book uses angly brackets, so that's what I'm going to use as well. So, uh, well, just like in the integers, it's the set of the multiples of A. So, uh, for the same reason as for the same reason as before, it's an ideal. You add two multiples, and and you get a multiple. You multiply a multiple by anything; it's still a multiple. And zero is always a multiple because it's zero times A. Uh, and I guess if we if we say an ideal is principal, if um, if it is generated by one element. All right, any questions? Does this sound familiar? Ah, uh, yes, sir. All right. Uh, so um, if you go one step further from principal ideals, you can just, so this is what how you make an ideal that contains one element. Um, but I want to make an ideal that contains basically a handful of elements that I pick. So, Say I pick two elements. I wanna I wanna find the ideal of containing it. And really, I wanna find the smallest one. Uh, if you saw this, the group, the subgroup generated by some elements, this is sort of the same thing. So um, if S is any subset. Uh, for ring, if I forget, R is a ring. Um, then what happens? Um, then I can talk about the ideal generated by this, the whole set. And I would write it the same way with the angle brackets. And, and this is the set of all possible um, expressions like this, where you take some things in the generating set, some things in the ring, and you multiply them together, and then you add the products. Uh, so these look like. If you think that, you know, if you go back to linear algebra, this looks like an, a linear combination of vectors. You would often say, look at things like this, where the Vs are vectors and lambdas are scalars. And here I'm taking my special elements in the generating set and then well, writing the same sort of expression. So these, for the, this reason, these are also called linear combinations of elements of S with coefficients in R. So um, I guess um, I should show that this is an ideal. So um, there's uh, so there's I think four things to prove. So let's see. Uh, does it contain zero? Yes. Um, zero is zero times a. So take any element in S. If S is empty, then you're just, I mean, you're just kind of being stupid. Uh, but I would say the, um, but let's say by definition, 
if S is empty, the ideal, the empty set generates is just zero. So it's going to be an ideal in that case. Um, so um, zero is always in there because I take an element and I multiply by zero. So that's good. Or actually, um, so if I have, let's say, uh, x and y. Oh, sorry, I mean in the ideal generated. Then is the sum. I need to show that it's as close under addition. And and this is very easy, right? Because the sum the, the sum of two things of this form is a thing of that form as well. Um, suppose x is a one a one b one blah, blah blah a and b n and y is a let's just say m plus one b m plus one blah 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 a m b m so this is what two elements in the in this set that I defined look like. So x plus y is the is the whole linear, the sum of linear combinations is linear combination. So there's that. Um, If you have an element in here, then its opposite is in here as well. Um, and I'm just going to say you can check this yourself. You know, is the opposite of a linear combination a linear combination? Yes, it is. Um, and finally, this is also pretty easy. I need to check that. I need to check that the the product of two things um, is contained in, in this set. So as before, if X is this sort of linear combination, then C times X is going to be uh, this expression. And is this? the same sort of linear combination? Well, yes, it is, because uh, I'm not being careful with the sides because my rings are commutative. Um, and this is a product of a sum of products of things in S, things in S and things in R, which by definition is an element of of the generated ideal. So there you go. So this is an ideal of R. <clears throat> and you can probably convince yourself that it's the smallest ideal uh, because any ideal that contains all of these elements has to contain all their multiples. That's part of being an ideal. And if it contains all of these kind of elements, it's going to contain all the sums. Um, right, so basically, you can think of a way of working with an ideal is just you have some generators and then you freely can start doing any of these operations, multiply by anything, add and subtract. And anything you anything you end up with, like this kind of thing is gonna be in the ideal. And, and as a matter of fact, this is everything you can get uh, by doing these operations. Okay, any questions? <clears throat> Let's look at an example. Um, so let's look at the ideal generated by two elements. And just as an example of just a little computation, uh, this ideal is actually, um, Equal, it's just the the whole ring. Um, uh, 
So how can I show this? Maybe think about it for a minute. How can you show that every polynomial um, is in this ideal? So every polynomial is some sort of combination of x and x minus 1. I'm going to give you a minute to think about it. <laughs> and I'll cut this out. So this is the set that contains every oh, oh, oh. <clears throat> every element of the form you multiply one by a polynomial and another by another polynomial and you add them together. So this contains a bunch of things. For example, in this set, there are, um, so what's a polynomial? An example of a polynomial that's in here. So basically you can make P and Q anything you like and whatever you get is in the ideal. So this is an ideal. It's the ideal generated by X and X minus one. <clears throat> so what's an example of two polynomials? Uh, X squared plus three. So that's one polynomial. Right, say x squared plus three and zero. So this means that x cubed, since I wrote this as a combination of, of my two polynomials, this means that this is an element of the ideal. Um, so for any two polynomials, um, whatever I get here is an element of, of the ideal. For example, zero times x plus one times x minus one. So zero and one are polynomials. Um, this is, of course, this is x minus one. This is in the ideal. Uh, is x in the ideal? It should be. So how can we show that it is? It would be one times x plus zero times x minus one. Mm -hmm. So we can we can keep writing linear combinations so we can work what we, with what we have. So, I mean, you always have that the generators are inside of the ideal. Mm -hmm. Otherwise we wouldn't call them the generators. Generating means that you are in the ideal and then whatever else needs to be is. So, um, So if, if you have two elements in an ideal, for example, you can, you can add them together. The addition of two things in the, in the ideal is also in the ideal. Um, you, can, you can subtract them. So one is also in the ideal. So, okay, um, so this is 
I mean, I got that one. It's in the ideal. Um, what can I know from here? That the whole ring is in the ideal. Right, the whole ring is in the ideal. Since one is in the ideal, um, any multiple, any multiple of one is in the ideal, and that's everything. Um, so, <clears throat> for any, any anything can be written as itself times one. So we're done. So basically, how do how did I show that this ideal was um, was everything. I just started with the generators and start doing operations until um, until you, until I got one. And then uh, once you get one, you know that doing more operations, namely multiplying, you can get everything. And that's, I mean, that's essentially how you prove uh, that you have a GCD. Um, so, Uh, let me, so let me prove the very important statement. Um, so, if K is a field, um, I guess I'm doing red. Uh, the statement is that Every ideal in the polynomial ring is principal. In other words, uh, every ideal is uh, of the form P of X or some P. So for example, in the previous page, I showed you an ideal that has two generators, but then it turns out that it's just generated by one. Uh, so, so it looks like it's not principal, but uh, in secret it is. And, and what this theorem says is that this is true for any ideal you can write. And this is, this is just a wonderful property for a ring to have, as you will see. Uh, so let's prove it. Um, so uh, I guess I should get this out of the way. If if the ideal is zero, uh, then it's generated by zero when we're done. So we can assume that of course, it's an ideal, it contains zero, but we're gonna assume it contains something that's not, not zero. So, um, oh, I should say, um, I should probably start with let I be an ideal. Yeah. Okay. So the zero ideal is principal. That's kind of silly. Um, so say I have an ideal. How do I find a generator in there? Um, well, there's, so here's how you do it. Um, take, um, oh, sorry. Oh. no, no. Um, Take the non zero element of I with the smallest degree. So the key here, the reason this works is that the degree 
um, uh, unless you're talking about the zero polynomial, it's a, it's a non-negative integer. And if you take the set of degrees that appear, there's going to be a smallest one because every set of non-negative integers has a uh, has a minimum. So let's call it Q. So now I want to show that the ideal is actually generated by Q. So um, Q is an element uh, in I. So this part is clear um, because any multiple of an element of I is going to be in the ideal. So I want to show now that every element in the ideal is a multiple of Q. So take an element in the ideal. So I want to show that um, Q divides P. So what can I do? So this is a key step of the proof. I have an element that I want to be, I, I'm, I'm hoping is um, the generator. And I want to show that, I, so to prove that I need to show that it divides everything else. So how do I show that Q divides P? What's the thing I can use? Uh, it's only been two weeks of the course. So really we've learned factoring. one thing. Yeah? Factoring. Factoring. Um, actually, I, I don't know. What, Maybe you've seen it last semester, but I haven't shown that you can factor polynomials into, you know, into prime factors. So something Sorry. else. Sorry, just dividing, just by dividing polynomials? Dividing and looking at the remainder. Yeah, so we're gonna be able to show pretty easily that uh, the remainder is zero. divide P by Q. So we get that P is Q times something plus R. And the degree of R is smaller than the degree of Q. And now look at this. Um, Q is an element of I, P, well, P and Q are elements of I, right? Um, I started saying that Q is an element of I, that's how we define it. I said P is an element of I. So C times Q is an element of I. You multiply anything in the ideal by anything, you're, you're still in the ideal. And this means that P minus QC is an element of I because you sum two things in the ideal or you subtract, you're still in the ideal. But of course, this is nothing but R because from that equation, from this equation, R is uh, P minus C Q, Q C. So R is an element of the ideal. Remember, I'm trying to prove that it's zero. Um, so R is an element of the ideal, but also the division algorithm tells me that it has smaller degree than Q. And now I'm done because if I say that the degree is smaller, but I also say that Q has the smallest degree, how can that be? Uh, Um, the only possibility is that R is zero. So P, the R was the remainder of the division. So P is actually a multiple of Q and we are done. So, 
Um, so that's it. So let me summarize. You take, you want to show uh, that the whole idea is a multiple of an element. You find the element to the smallest degree. And then for anything else, you look at the remainder of the division. And the key thing about the division is that it gives you something of smaller degree. You see that the remainder has to be in the same ideal. And if you have smaller degree, the remainder has to be zero. And, and that's it. Uh, this is a very important proof uh, and a very important result. Um, any questions? Does this make sense? Okay. Full trace. Okay, uh, let's keep going then. So, um, so now that I know that every ideal in the polynomial ring is principal, I can show uh, that the GCD exists. So let's see that. Let uh, EQ be elements in the polynomial ring over a field. Then the there is such a thing as a GCD. Um, there are two polynomials such that um, the GCD is a linear combination of those. <clears throat> okay. So this is the proof. Consider the ideal generated by P and Q. And now the, the one thing I know from, from the one thing I proved today is that this ideal is principal. <clears throat> and I'm going to call it D, and it's going to turn out to be the, the GCD. So the ideal generated by P and Q is the, the set of multiples of D. Um, so where are we going now? Uh, so this means, well, this means two things. Um, it means that this ideal is contained. So it means that there's two containments happening. So, um, so these sort of, they basically encode everything we want. Um, if P and Q are contained in the ideal generated by D, this means that D divides P and D divides Q because the ideal that D generates is a set of multiples of, of D. And if D is contained in the ideal generated by P and Q, remember this ideal is the set of everything that looks like this. Uh, so D must be of this form. There exists R and S such that uh, D is P R plus Q S. So that's that's almost everything. Uh, that's part two. Um, 
and I've shown that D divides P and Q. And now the only thing that remains is showing that it's the greatest common divisor. Now, uh, what does it mean? Uh, I need to prove that any other divisor uh, of both is a divisor of D. Well, I shouldn't call it D prime because it looks like a derivative. Um, D2. <clears throat> well, um, this is really a, a already, I already know this. So how can I how can I see it from here? If I have so if I have d two that divides p and q, why does it have to divide d? So B is a multiple of D2 and Q is a multiple of D2. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. wait, there you go, yeah. So you, that must have taken a while to write. Um, you take, so D2 dividing P means that D2 divides any multiple of P. And the same goes for Q. If D2 divides Q, it divides any multiple of Q. And if you if D2 divides two polynomials, it's going to divide their sum. And, and that's it. Because the sum of these two things is just D. <clears throat> I could. <clears throat> oh, shouldn't write anything else. I don't have room. Any questions? All right. Uh, well, if there's no questions, um, then I guess I'm done today. Um, you can.